whole adventure of this particular ranch that we purchased started back when I was a little kid and would ride the railroad track that borders the ranch uh, and look at this place and just see all of the diversity, the, the grasses, the animals that were inhabiting this place. It is a place of adventure. It's kind of rare to find, you know, somebody my age that's stepping in to operate a farm that's not a family farm. And, you know, I know what it's like. Your father, your grandpa still makes the decisions on the ranch, but you're seeing all this new technology and you're seeing all these things available to do it better. And you can't because your kind of hands are tied by the family ranch. And we got lucky, I don't have that. So if I find something that's cool, we're gonna go explore it. Before farming, I was in mold remediation, the business of killing fungi. But I was curious to understand what these fungi were actually doing. And it led me to discover that fungi are vital to soil regeneration. The key to a healthy soil is uh, you need fungi, you need active fungi growing and you need it to be equal to your bacteria. And when I found that, I said there's all kinds of opportunities to take this knowledge that I've already got and apply it to a totally different concept. And really got focused on the compost and really got focused on making a um, biologically diverse, fungal dominated compost because that's what the soil needs. Yep, so, so what, we, what we're doing is we're making a Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Um, you know, the recipe that we use is a 60% woody material. Um, and that, you know, includes branches, twigs, sh sawdust, shavings. Um, we want to keep kind of bigger uh, particles. So, you know, one inch by two inch um, because airflow is the most important for us. So you can see, I mean, we got a fairly large stick in here, um, chunky wood, and then of course, small pieces of wood. And the reason for that is just the more diversity you have, the more pockets you have for air to get into. Um, to make a good compost, you have to have lots of oxygen. Uh, oxygen has to flow freely and continue to feed these microorganisms. If they don't have oxygen, uh, they go anaerobic or your, your compost goes anaerobic. And now you're fighting anaerobic biology, uh, which is not beneficial to your soil. Um, so our focus, at least in why we did this, uh, is to get maximum amount of airflow. Uh, the materials that go in, being our wood, is what gives us that spacing. Um, the second thing we use is about 30% uh, alfalfa hay. And that's hay that we produce on the ranch. And then we uh, use roughly a 10% high nitrogen source. A um, couple of different options. One, we use spent grains. We have a lot of breweries here in town. Uh, we use a spent grains, some spent grains off of that, and then we use horse manure. Uh, that horse manure comes from our horses that we feed our hay. Um, and the reason we do that is we want to maximize the biology of the existing crops that we're growing. So we want to be putting the mycorrhizal down, or producing the mycorrhizal, that goes back onto our fields and re-inoculates the alfalfa that we have growing. Once you get this process going and you have food sources for everybody, it snowballs, right? This continue, you know, bacteria breed every 20 minutes. So if you have 10,000, you know, now by the end of the hour, that 10,000, you know, has made uh, to 20,000, to 100,000, to a million. Very quickly they can rise, but if you have the predators there, right, the protozoas, the nematodes, they hop on that population right away and all of a sudden they have a food source. And they're keeping those guys at a manageable level. And you'll see just ebbs and flows of higher bacteria, lower bacteria, higher fungal, lower fungal in a higher protozoa, lower protozoa. Um, it happens, you just have to monitor that in your field and keep those levels at a manageable number. We took over the ranch a little over a year ago, so in spring of 2021. And when we got there, you know, there was really no diversity in the soil. Um, it had been turned not every year, but frequently. We immediately planted cover crops. 
and uh, we're seeing it now. I mean, the rest of the ranch, the regenerative process has begun and it's coming fast. Last year we did a, a test that we planted in the fall and uh, it was right when we were getting into the compost extract and, you know, was it gonna be a benefit? So we did a test where we planted a strip uh, with our compost extract in furrow of cereal rye. Um, and the original thought was that it probably wasn't gonna do much. Um, and now we're seeing the results of that. So we planted an entire 40 acres without it and just did one pass with our ash no-till drill, putting compost extract in furrow. And this year the results are remarkable. Um, you know, we have a plant, you know, that's eight inches that's been, was planted the exact same day, exact same time in soil right next to plants that we planted with compost extract. And we've got four and a half, five foot of growth uh, on our extract plants. And we've got, you know, eight to 10 inches of growth on our non-extract plants. To me, that was kind of the game changer. It's saying, you don't put a seed in the ground unless you've got biology with it because uh, that biology helps that seed get established, and when that seed's established, you know, and you got biology down there converting nutrients, that plant's gonna, you're gonna grow, you know, to its maximum potential. This is the unit that Corey bought to get more or less on a commercial or an industrial scale extraction process. Fully, uh, this is uh, totally transportable. We can make up to 1,200 gallons. A um, five pound bucket, courtesy of Home Depot, uh, holds uh, approximately 25 pounds of um, compost. This big uh, tank that's on our left, we call it the kettle. And that's what uh, we primarily put uh, the fresh, clean water. Uh, we go ahead and put the compost in there. Uh, and then we put in a little bit of, uh, a little scoop of pure carbon, which is kind of uh, candy for the bugs. So they, they grow extremely well and are quite, quite productive. Is the kettle itself, has got an internal unit that has got uh, all this mesh on it that allows the uh, bugs, if you will, we're, we're, that's a misnomer, but bacteria, protozoas, things along those lines, uh, allows them to pass into the water that is then extracted into this tank. And then all of the wood chips and the larger material, uh, you'll, when you clean this thing out, you'll find sand, rocks, uh, lots of wood chips, things along those lines. Get it out, put it in uh, the bucket of our uh, our skid steer, and um, then we just go and put it on our pile and recycle it. So it's uh, it's going from you know one compost uh, uh, starting off as compost and ending up as compost. So it's a, it's a nice nice circular sort of uh, program. So once we kind of came to the conclusion that uh, this you know biocomplete compost extract was the, the route that we were gonna take, we had to start developing some equipment, at least on a larger scale, that we could get this put across our land quickly. Um, and of course, the, the, the first answer was, you know, we have five pivots on our property. Being able to inject this through our pivots was key because it took zero labor. You know, it's, it's a process all of about 10 minutes to take the trailer out there uh, after we've filled it with extract, connect it to the pivot, turn it on, program the pump to operate at the speed the pivot's going and put that extract down. We've seen significant results with that method. Um, we have a lot of hand line irrigation and a lot of wheel line irrigation. And it was how do we get this down on our soils uh, with this? And we found a, a water truck and we basically just took a, um, an, an older, you know, not totally at the end of its life, but near its end of its life water truck um, that's totally fine to cruise around the ranch and bounce around the field spreading our extract. Put a little onto pump on the back of it and a 65 foot boomless sprayer. And we're able to get the extract, you know, with minimal passes across our field 
and you know we can cover as much as 150 acres per application or as little as necessary. We're trying to only run half full just so we're not putting the weight on our fields. Um, but became a very effective tool in getting this extract out on the field. Another uh, really interesting piece of equipment that we discovered along the way was uh, uh, an aerator and being able to use that aerator to apply compost extract. And what we do is we uh, take our aerator over the soil, it pokes about an eight inch hole, uh, an inch wide, four inches long, into our soil and right behind it, or on top of it, we've got some tanks. Those tanks are just gravity feeding down to a spreader bar and we're dropping that extract right in those holes uh, while we're aerating. So it gets, you know, it basically takes two passes through our field and makes it down to one that are both super beneficial for fighting compaction, getting that biology close to the root as we can. Um, very effective. And the, the last piece of equipment that we use is our ash no-till drill. We like it because it's, you know, 12 foot wide uh, in the field, but we can uh, rotate it and only be less than nine foot wide for transport. We have a lot of places we gotta go and we're driving on roads, so it's a lot safer. We can get through just about any gate on our ranch as well as other people's when they need help. Um, but we bought a, sh a system from Shaffer Manufacturing uh, that allows us to meter the compost extract that we're making and run it through a tubing system down in furrow so that we're dripping liquid directly on our seed in the ground. Um, system is very, very effective. Um, what we've seen, we've taken test samples on uh, multiple fields and, and uh, even on our, our cereal rye that we planted, that's how it was applied. And we found significant coverage and significant biology in furrow right on the root while that seed's developing. And we're seeing just plant compared to the plant next to it that doesn't have it, um, significant differences in the uh, virality, the, the um, growing of what those plants are doing. Extremely healthy. When you start getting excited about a project and you start to see success, you wanna tell everybody about it. We're able to offer this to other people in the community. And uh, one of those people are Malayan Meadowlark uh, Flower Farm. The gal, Jennifer, that runs that, I uh, told her, you know, she was discussing with me what she's doing. And I said, you gotta try this. I mean, we're seeing some amazing results. And so early this spring, she came out and uh, got some extract. You know, we filled up a couple of buckets. She took it over, put it on her plants. And, you know, it takes time for it to develop. But as we go around there now, she's telling us these are the healthiest that her plants have ever been. Another thing that we found, and, and I don't know if this is happenstance, or just uh, that what we're doing is actually working. Um, but we haven't had a vet call this year for our cattle herd. You know, typically we're running into issues where uh, we got a, a pink eye, we're having pregnancy issues or fertility issues, or, you know, something is always going on with animals on the farm and you always gotta maintain their health and be checking their health daily. And, you know, we're doing all of that, but it's, it, you know, and this is kind of just something that's been in the back of my head that we're putting this biology down. We're making a more nutrient dense feed for our livestock. And I'm assuming, right? And I've read this and I've studied this, that the health of our herd is going to improve. You know, if the nutrition that they're getting is better, if the plants that they're eating have a higher nutritional value or a healthier plant, then the assumption is, is that that cow is gonna be a healthier animal. Um, you know, and we're seeing that, you know, and it's telling us that maybe this method is, is cheaper than we thought because we're not having vet costs anymore. So one of the technologies that we're using on the ranch is uh, the vents virtual fencing system. And, uh, you know, as everybody knows, it takes a lot of labor uh, to move cattle frequently. Um, but we really need cattle to be a big part of our regenerative process. And this allows us to do that particular part of our chores remotely. This is a vents collar, um, basically controlled by radio communication from a tower that we have on the ranch. 
um, which then communicates to uh, through software, through a computer, or through a phone where we can identify the perimeter of a virtual fence. Um, that communicates to the tower, the tower communicates back to this essentially necklace that the cattle are wearing. Uh, and all the electronics, of course, are packed in here. Battery, um, we have two chains. Okay, one is a positive, one is a negative. Um, and then in between, we mount this plastic collar. So as we go on, um, we separate the chains on each side. And then as you can see, we mount them with the plastic, uh, of course, on the top of the neck. The reason for this is that uh, past technologies, or at least in the development of this process, they'd have had issues with, if it was like a dog collar had a nodule, those nodules would flip as the cows would rub on each other on a fence or itch on a tree. And so this allows them there to always be a skin contact to deliver stimulation uh, if it was necessary. The benefit of these collars that allows us to move our cattle as frequently as necessary to avoid overgrazing whatever pasture they're in. Um, we can increase density, we can keep them small area, we can open up larger area. Um, really effective on some of the lease ground that we have that we're using other people's land for, but we can get in and manage that and effectively do it on our computer without having to spend a ton of money building fences. Um, so really it gives us a bunch of flexibility in managing our cow herd. This method of getting compost extract onto the fields is not expensive. You know, we build our Johnson Seuss for less than 50 bucks. We have the materials on the ranch to do it. It just takes a little time. Getting that liquid produced is invaluable. You know, it, it, you can't put a price on it because it, is, it does so much for your soil. And when you start developing that and you start seeing the results, uh, the success that you're gonna have on your farm is significant. And we're seeing that. And we've done it in one year.